We're gonna cope. How are we gonna cope with that? Ah, we'll cope. Will we? Yeah. Talking about next weekend, not not this weekend. Next weekend. That's arranged with Pam to go across to Cornwell um, on Sunday. On Sunday, and I've arranged with Mick and Jane to go up to Farsley to Gallery on, on Saturday. Saturday. <laughs> so we've got well, two that, days running. Two days running, Gavin. Mm. And then Monday we're setting off. Yep. We'll have to do a few trips to camp and before then then. <sighs> then then. <laughs> yeah, it, oh, Just right, a, yeah. a couple of... Yeah. I mean, because you, you really don't know whether you'll get in on Monday, but you should do, shouldn't you? Uh, it's, it's, you never know. No. Whether we'll get a van parked up here to load it up. No. Uh, so usually make a few trips down to it. Excuse me. Pile stuff in it. Yeah. Um. Oh, God, it's gone straight out of my head. Has it? What? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> what about? <laughs> oh. You're running about yesterday. Right. You were up in Farsley, weren't you? Yeah. Again. And then you went down to Pay Eileen. I always, whenever I, when I go down to Eileen's to Pay, I'm always there ages. We we have a right chat, don't we? Mm. I mean, she's amazing, is Eileen. She's in her nineties. Um. She's been a. A cyclist, a, a very, very committed cyclist. Yeah. Um, all her life. Um, she used to go racing, cycle racing. Um, <laughs> She's such a petite lady, isn't she? Yeah, she very is. small. She is. Yeah. But, um, mm. but she was telling me, her grandson, um, I was about the, about the same age as our Alethea. We went uh, to primary school with her and yeah, then they, moved up. Yeah, they, they went to primary school together, but this, they then went the separate ways. And um, the lad, ever since he was four years old, took an interest in bagpipes, of all things. <laughs> bagpipes. Yeah. And... He, he continued playing, and when he was 16, he applied to join a band, a, a Piper's, you know, Scottish Piper's band in Newcastle. And um, they, they thought, who's this, Six, a 16-year-old? And when they saw who he'd been taught by, they said, oh, we'll have him. Because apparently the, the, the bloke that taught it well, I'm saying a bloke, I don't know, it could be female for all I know. What had a great reputation amongst Pipers. So he's been going up to Newcastle from Leeds every other weekend. That is until he started um, going out with a girlie who plays <laughs> drums. <laughs> and he's, now he goes up every week. But he's just won a contest and he's come first, he won it. And all, all Scottish lot are really <laughs> peeved about it because he's the only Englishman ever to win it. <laughs> this prize. I, well, will he be 17 or 18? He'll be 18. Could, yeah, no. could be either. No, I think, I think he's, he, he's still... He's 18 in June or July, oh, I right. think. just after. Just Leafy. after Leafy, yeah. Yeah. Um, right. So... So he's got quite a, um, a thing going on in, in his life, hasn't he? Well, he, the Glasgow Pipe, 
Piper's band have asked if he'd join them. Um, but he says it, it's hard enough getting to Newcastle every weekend without going to Glasgow. <laughs> um, so he's, he's been head-hunted, this, this lad. I don't know whether he can earn a living playing bagpipes, but he's obviously good. Mm. So, isn't it strange how... I suppose people can hire you. Um, like, I mean, yeah. the... They have the bagpipes on um, Oot and Nanny on with the visit, don't they? Of course, yeah. Every year. Yeah, um, I don't know where. there'll be other people who hire them. Um, um, I don't really know. It's not so much. No, no. not so much we're into, is no. it, bagpipes? But he played, um, did he play bagpipes or trumpet up at? Um, War Memorial when they yeah, did bagpipes. put that, it bagpipes for yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. In yeah, Rodley yeah. we've got a little War M Memorial and he, on the Sunday when the... He did it in Leeds at six o'clock in the morning at a church. Did he? Somewhere in Leeds. Mm. Once. It, it was some anniversary or something. Right. Yeah. Mm. Because it was quite a haunting sound mm. in the middle of these at that time of a Sunday morning. Yeah, it would be, wouldn't it? Yeah. Mm. Ah. I wonder if he did that at the place opposite the infirmary, that little square. What, Civic Hall? Civic Hall, yeah. In front of Civic Hall. It's where they usually have things on, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Like um, the um, Christmas market and things like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Civic Hall. Mm. Just in front. I remember that Civic Hall. But not for not for a good reason. Oh. I've told you before, but there'll be a lot of people who haven't heard it, heard the story, but when I was a kid, I'm talking about maybe being nine or ten. Um, I had, um, <laughs> I went through a phase of being, of having a fetish for leather, anything <laughs> like wallets and diaries and anything with leather bound. Um, I don't know, I just, and I, I, I went through a period of nicking stuff. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> <At nine. laughs> well, uh, I nicked a diary from a bookshop in Leeds. It won't be there anymore. It was called Beans. And uh, my dad found out. Can't remember how he found out about this. Um, but it's a good job he did. Because he put an end to my nicking spree. spree. <laughs> um, <laughs> and he... He took me back to the shop and he, he made me hand this diary back to the shopkeeper to tell him, apologise to him for stealing this diary. Um, and on the day that we went back, well, the day that the Queen and Prince Philip uh, visited Leeds and they went to Civic Hall and there were all people mm -hmm. everywhere and all come to see the Queen. And I'll never forget that. Yeah. That was the day that I was handing this, I had to hand this book back. Diary back. Was it on Edrow, the bookshop? I have no idea where. I think I remember the being a bookshop on Edrow, but I don't uh, know. What no, it was no. No, mm. I, I couldn't. In fact, Leeds has changed so much. You can't, ah. can't say where it was. The street mm. where it was probably been enveloped by some massive glass fronted office block. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it was a it were a different city then to what it is now. I mean it's 
It is a magnificent city, I can't deny it. Oh, yeah. It's very, very, it must be prosperous, Leeds. I look at these buildings and I just don't understand what they, on earth goes on in them. Mm -hmm. it, it's, I mean, it's a mystery, isn't it? There must be hundreds and hundreds of r rooms in each of these blocks. Mm -hmm. What goes on in them all? How do they make money? It must cost a colossal amount of money to build these things. Oh, yeah. And rent them or whatever they mm. do. I don't know whether they rent them or own them or what. Mm. It's a total mystery to me. Like something or, you know, these buildings. When you think all my life we've... The, the, kind, of, the kind of quantities of money that we've been associated with have been minute. Mm. And other people like that must have just spent their life involved in billions yeah. of pounds. Yeah. Um, I I watched um, um, an hotel program last night, and I mean it's one we've had, probably had recorded for a long time, but we decided to watch it. And um, it's that lady cook and a chap that go to hotels and they work in these hotels <clears throat> and um, tell you about it, tell you things and show you what they do. And this particular one were in Morocco, just oh. outside Morocco, and it were in, in the mountains and it had been, it had been a few different things and then You'll never guess who bought it. Richard Branson. Branson? Yeah, bought it from the previous owner who just used it as a like a, a storage place. Branson did? No, this other oh, person. Right. And it was his mother, Branson's mother, that told him about it and um, asked him to buy it. Oh. And she'd got involved with the villagers of and who oh, were doing um, little rugs and things, and she started them up in this big room with all these looms and what, you in know, this hotel. In, no, in it this... were it were in actually in the village itself. Oh. Um, but what she wanted him to do was um, she took him there, and he was so impressed with it that. He decided that he would open this hotel and employ everyone from the village. He, he had to initially employ um, a chef from outside and um, he employed people to train these villagers in different jobs. Well, initially to learn English. All right. Because... He said, you need to learn English to talk to the guests because they're going to be... Get, um, from all over the world. Yeah, from all over the world. And um, I think most of them speak English and French now. Most of so, you know, people who work there. Right, okay. And he's even got a chef now that's from the village. Okay. All right. Up. All right. Um, and, um, oh. Oh, it was fantastic. It built a swimming pool outside and there were like stepped grass things. And on an evening, they'd, they'd set these um, like sponge settees out that you could sit on with a cover. And they set a projector screen up at the other end at the swimming pool oh. and put films on like Casablanca and, oh, right. <laughs> and that. Right. <clears throat> and um, oh, they just bought all the vegetables from market and everything, you know. So everybody got um, got a helping hand from village and oh, farmers yeah. and yeah, everything. Yeah, yeah. And they had a little petting zoo with two, two donkeys, two, two camels, and, and other things, you know, um, for kiddies when they went. 
if there were any kiddies when... And is this current? Yeah, well, mm. up until, I, I believe there were an earthquake. Oh. Um, and he had to shut down for, I think it was four months. Oh. Um, so how it's doing now, I don't know, but it just seems such a fantastic place. Wow. I mean, all rugs in place were made from mm. this little place in wow. village and, wow. and, and baskets and things and, you know, just wooden things that were made in village. Right. It were, it were really interesting. Mm. Yeah, little Morocco. Talking about making things, I've had some instructions for you about that. Oh, have you? Me cross stitch? Cross stitch. Oh, and? Well, I don't know. I'll have to you read, have to read to it to you. and tell me. To, yeah. Oh, well, thank you, whoever sent it. Yeah, I thank will you. investigate. Mm. I'll show Trevor today what I'm talking about. Mm. <clears throat> I mean, I have done cross stitch before and usually just fold it in half and then in a quarter and the middle um, is where you start off. Right, so what's different but about this? But this, this is not the same. Why? I don't know, it's, it looks very complicated to me, unless I'm making a mountain out of a molehill. <laughs> Maybe you need to show them. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, and I had, um, I remembered what I was going to say the other day about, oh, yeah. I had something to tell you. And it was another programme I watched, of course. <laughs> <laughs> and um, it, these people had gone in to help this chap clean his house up. And he'd got two two children, one were four and one were six, and his wife had died. And um, the kiddies had drawn on the car stair carpet coming down with a line going down each step. With a, what word? Um, a felt tip, I felt think tip. it was. Um, and he said the way to get rid of it is to spray shaving foam on it Leave it for 10 minutes and then rub it, rub it off. And it did come off. I was really surprised. Right. It did, shaving foam, folks. Right. there you go. And the, the drawn on door, on the bedroom door outside with some kind of a pen. Not and very disciplined kids, <clears throat> really. Well, they've no mum, have they? The dad works from home all day. Right. Um, they would have only maybe been... The youngest two when they did, yeah. did this um, and uh, the older one was brilliant she was a real little cracker <laughs> the six year old <laughs> um, and um, he sprayed air spray on the door and just left it for a minute and then rubbed it off and it come off did it That's then it. Whatever pen it was, I don't spray. know, it came off with air spray. Wow. I thought, well, I'm, I've got to my age and I didn't know these tricks. There you go. Not that I've ever worked with little kiddies like that. Mm. But um, interesting if you've got your grandkids that come <laughs> round and want to scribble. <laughs> well, I've, that reminds me of a blooming house I once went to, to tune a piano. And... Um, I could, when I went in the house, everything was drawn on. Was it? Even television screen. Oh. Um, and when I went, when I went out, when I finished tuning the, the piano, the drawn outside of my car. Oh. And uh, well, I, I, I went, I went once after that, I think, but I didn't park. I parked my car for down down the road. I won't park my car in drive. <laughs> well. Yeah. Funny, isn't it? That? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So, that's our to, today's escapade. Yeah. yeah. Or yesterday's. Yeah. So, yeah. Have I got else to say? Mm. Looks a bit brighter today, out there. You haven't been as, anywhere near as bad as I said it was going to be this no. week. It had, 
beginning of week it was forecasting rain every day, all day. Mm. Uh, um, it didn't rain yesterday because I went up to Farsley and uh, yeah. I went down to Eileen's. I were up and down and in and out. <laughs> Do you know, yeah. on, the, on our walk with Mick, I walked 17,000 steps. <laughs> they were on my watch. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lot, isn't it? Fair bit, yeah. I think you, you knew you'd done it when you got back, did you? Oh, all right, because we'd sort of... Stopped off. Stopped. And, Oops. And the, the main walk, we're walking into Leeds. And then when we were in Leeds, we, we were pub crawling, so to speak, weren't we? And then we got bus back and had a pint, had a drink, not a pint, a drink in the bridge, bridge pub. Mm. So, and then got bus back to Rodley. And Mick walked, Mick did more than me, I think, because he walked uphill to, to Edinburgh um, when we parted. Yeah, we always get bus up, I can't do that hill anymore. I can't do that Edinburgh hill. No. Can't, can I? You have to get 91 <laughs> up there. So we get two buses when we go to Mick's. Yeah, we do. <laughs> bus down to Kirkstall and then bus from Kirkstall up to Edinburgh. I used to be able to do it, but it's not, it's uphill, it just shatters me. <laughs> it is a fairly steep hill. Yeah, it is a fairly steep hill, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Anyway, darling. Yes, that's the end of our little chat today. So, well, tomorrow is Saturday. Saturday. You Saturday don't, is the weekend, know. so you never know whether we'll be able to do a video <laughs> on the weekend. <laughs> no. Yeah. But if we can, we will. Yeah. All right, folks. Bye. Bye.